Yeah, we finished more songs than we needed. A lot of songs got left by the roadside, and then a lot of songs we did finish on the way there, and um, I think they'll come out eventually, the ones that, that didn't make it to the record. Hey friends, it's your girl Emily Curl. We're back in our iHeartRadio studio and today we're hanging out with Britt and Alex from Spoon. Let's give it up! Hello. Do you like the clapping intro? That always gets me fired up. It, it was unexpected. <laughs> Y'all are louder than I thought you were. <laughs> Gonna be. The enthusiasm. Well, we're so happy to see you guys. Welcome to iHeart. Um, it's fun that you're in the city too. We were just talking, you just played a sold out show at Baby's All Right in Brooklyn last night. What was that experience like? That was a nice little show. We were, it's just sort of a warm up for us. We're about to do, go do a lot of amphitheaters this this month. So um, yeah, it was nice to play a little one. So I've never been in there before and I love that place. The it's, big disco ball is always really fun. I mean, it has a certain vibe to it for yeah. sure. Um, at this stage in your career, I mean, you guys have been playing shows for so long. Do, do you still get excited about that part? Performing, coming up with a set list, getting ready to go on, on, on tour and, and play on a stage? I like the whole thing, yeah. I like knowing there's going to be a party at the end of the night <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, making a set list and figuring out how the night's going to go, the whole thing. It's yeah. good. Let's talk about your new music for a second because your 10th album, Lucifer on the Sofa, is out now. First of all, congratulations. Thank that you. name is so good. Can we start with that? Where, where did the name come from? Uh, it came from up here. That's, that's a lyric from, from one of the songs and I wrote the song um, kind of quickly and uh, just kind of words came out and out and out and I didn't know that what that line really meant as I was writing it but I, I, it was my favorite line of the song. It was just something about it just seemed kind of um, poetic and creepy. And, uh, so yeah, <laughs> it is I think a good every, visual. You're every, right. every album needs a, um, every great album needs a great album title and so we, we found ours. Yeah, and then, so you also mentioned that this is, you feel like this is the band's truest rock and roll record to date. I think you, that's what the bio says, yes. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. Do you think that's true? I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, it's pretty rock and roll, I'd say. Pretty lively. That we, was the we, idea. We played it together as a band, which it, is is maybe unheard of for some people these the days. The sound of a band in a room yeah. playing live was sort of what we wanted to go for, as opposed mm. to maybe the last record was a little more, um, it was like a little more produced, you know, like p pieced together as we were recording it, writing it, recording it at the same time. This one was more, you know, just kind of how a band would play it. We figured out ahead of time, then you hit yeah. record. Yeah. You know? And now you created this album in your hometown of Austin, Texas, right? Right. Did that make it any more special? Like, did you feel like it was more of like a hometown record? For sure. I mean, I moved back to Austin to with the idea of kind of so that we could all be together. He moved I to moved Austin there. for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm still in Austin. He Did went you? back to LA. Uh, how long were you guys there? How long was, did the album take? Well, I was there for like five months and then <laughs> the pandemic happened. So we got like kind of cut off there for a bit. I went back home and then eventually we got back together. But all in all, I don't know how long it took. It took longer, longer than, than it, we expected. Yeah, longer yeah. than it should have. We had that little interruption. But it ended up being a more quality record because we, we went through something like, I think I added it up and it was 42 songs that we went through um, to get to the 10 that made the album. So with more time, you just, you go through more more of the process. You weed, you know, you, can, you have more songs to weed out and you know, it's a it's one of our best records. What, what does that selection process look like to get down to those 10 songs you feel really good about? What does it look like? Um. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> sitting in a room together and being like, is this gonna work? Uh -huh. uh, you know, the ones that work well, they naturally like float to the surface and some of them started to maybe work well, but didn't get as far al far along as, as the ones that made it onto the record. And some it, of them maybe we played once and we were like, nah. Is there anything that o that made the record but almost didn't make it that you guys had to really fight for? Well, um, there was. I know there's one that didn't make the record that I wanted to make the record. <laughs> Which one was that? Uh, Silver Girl. Yeah. Um, you knew. But it just didn't fit like with the rest of the songs as well, maybe or something like that. We ended up with yeah. We finished. Uh, more songs than we needed. A lot of songs got left by the roadside, and then a lot of songs we did finish on the way there, and um, I think they'll come out eventually, the ones that, that didn't make it to the record. Yeah, I, I want to rewrite that one, though. Okay. Oh. That's fine. Is that all right? <laughs> That's, like, 
Let's take it back to Leave the, the music board. how it is and just yeah. get new vocals. For on. sure. Oh, new words. Just start over from scratch. Cool. I'm going to do it. All right. So when you have those songs that you do love and it rolls over, like, is that going to be, a, like, does that set the tone for the next project? Or do you just kind of have it, it on the back burner? It can. I think we'll probably want to, if we make another record. Who knows? Uh, then well, I think we'll want to start, <laughs> we'll probably want to start over with a brand new idea and a new direction. Yeah. But I, I would like to see those songs come out eventually, the ones that didn't make it. Sugar Babies didn't make it. Mm. Um, yeah, it'll it'll all happen. Yeah. Well, speaking of your albums, it's been 20 years since your Kill the Moonlight album, which is crazy yeah. to think about. When you think about the season of life and that album, and especially talking about like the production of it, what's changed like from this last album to that very first album that you created? I don't know. I mean, I think that this record is a little bit more of a... It, 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 it's more of a band record, and Kill the Moonlight was, was very much a... Um, it was a record that, you know, there's a... There's a song on it that's that's the beat is beatboxing. You know, there's a song on it with a backwards drum machine. There's a song on it with no drums, just tambourine. It's more of a, it's a s album that kind of goes to different places. Then there's a garage rock song. Then there's like a straightforward piano rock song. So it's 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 a it's a very varied record. It's um, one of our most unique records. Um, I still love it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like so many fans do too. Like that's one of their fan favorites. What do you think it is about that record in particular? It's got the way we get by on it. You know, that's like the first song that, um, you know, first song we ever played on TV. It's I think you know people remember the first time that they heard a band. But we we played a show last night. And we started out with the first few songs from that record and. People went nuts. Yeah, I was talking to somebody yeah. afterwards and they were like, I thought you were going to go through the whole record and you <laughs> stopped. I was like, psych, relax. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually talking before uh, before this about like those pivotal albums growing up that like the first real album that you love, that you're like, okay, this sort of shaped the way that I view music. Right. What was the album for each of each one of you? There's so many of them, but yeah. I mean, I think when, like I, the very th first when I think about- um, Thriller. Thriller? Yeah, yeah, I just had like a cassette of it growing up and I would listen to it all the time. And then like I had a, Beatles compilation too. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the White Album is a good one for yeah. that. I think about the, the the albums that felt the most like an album, not just a you know half haphazard, haphazard collection of songs, but when it actually feel like feels like the, the um, are piecing together mm. one cohesive you know piece of art. And for me, that was like a lot of Prince records were like that. Yeah. Beatles records. Purple Rain was definitely like that. You could feel all the the songs kind of between songs they're blending into each other and they have cool transitions and it just clearly there was an auteur at work who was um, you know thinking about these things. Yeah. So again, we're so excited for you guys. You're about to go on tour. You're prepping for that. Um, is there anything in particular that you're going to do for this tour that maybe you haven't done in the past? We're talking to Interpol about doing some songs with them, you know, like, um, and I don't know that they've ever done that before. We, it's something we we do a lot if we go out on tour with the band is we have the band up and play yeah. the last song with us or yeah. we figure something out, like a cover we can do or, yeah. or whatever. So I'm hoping we get to do that. We still haven't sorted it out exactly yet, but uh, I'll see them tomorrow. We talked about bringing back some old songs that we haven't played before, or at oh. least I haven't played before like yeah. with y'all. 30 gallon tank. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pushing we'll for we'll it. We'll see about that. I'm pushing for it. <laughs> well, we're ready for that. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you so yeah, much for you. stopping by. We're so excited about the tour. Thank you all for watching. Let's give it up one more time for Britt and Alex from Spoon. Thank you all. And thanks, everyone. Make sure you stream thanks, all Ray. of Spoon's music on iHeartRadio, including their new album, Lucifer on the Sofa. It's out now, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.